You might be wondering about the title. Why isn't there a redstone circuit listed? Well, that's because that's the thing about redstone timers or redstone clocks, whatever you want to call them. You can connect them up to anything redstone based that needs a timer connected to it to function. What's important though is the kind of input you need. That brings about the question, how do I get a single pulse or a continual signal from a redstone timer? And where do I take the signal from on the timer? Let's use a very simple timer circuit to start off with. One of the fastest timers we've got, the comparator timer. It's really as simple as that. You just put a redstone torch in the back, throw this into subtract mode, and it's just going crazy. For the comparator timer, it is always a pulse, and you can take the signal from this timer from these locations. I find it also quite handy that you can also put a block right here, and then if you throw down a torch, it will still function just like that, just as easily. You can put it on top and it'll work that way. You can put things in front of it like this as well. It's quite handy just how flexible this particular circuit is. Some simple uses for this clock could be for a neuro dispenser, uh, dispensing items, or to use bone meal in a dispenser, which has many different farm applications. One thing to note about this extremely fast comparator timer is that it doesn't work great in automatic sorting systems, as the clock is truly limited by how fast your sorting system can push the items through the hoppers. Now there is one issue with the comparator timer that I have found a little bit frustrating at times in builds, and that is the distance you have to go and have the redstone dust away from the comparator for it to work. Generally speaking, it must be three, at least on the third, for this to work properly. So I'll flick the lever and you'll notice the first two just threw out one feather, but that last one is working perfectly fine. But there's also something interesting is that this one will start triggering if I remove this piece of redstone dust and you throw down a dropper right here, throw in some feathers, and you need to put the redstone dust back on top. And you'll now see that once again, because it is three, this dropper will now start working. You can see now those last two are functioning properly. So that's just something to keep in mind with the comparator timer. Now let's see one of the most well-known circuits named after its creator, the Ethel Hopper clock itself. This particular clock can make very short pulses, and it kind of is already doing, or it can make longer ones. In fact, it can make extremely long ones. There is a comment that I've seen on occasion where people are wondering where exactly you get your signals out of this critter, and the answer is actually quite simple. You can take the signal out of here, and out of this spot as well, and very easy really. You see the redstone dust there, and it does turn off with each cycle when this empties once. And there's also a spot on this side and this side, taking the, the, the signal right out of these hoppers using a comparator. Either one will work. And then the final location that you can take the signal out of is in fact the block itself. Just keep in mind with these ones, if you put it right here, that is going to make it impossible for that one to work. So to make it possible to take the signal out of these, you either got to take the redstone dust from the side like this. But my recommendation is in fact just to use a repeater on the side and that way you can extend the signal out no problem. Now there is a major advantage from taking the signal from the left and the right side and also taking it from the hoppers compared to taking it from the redstone block. And that is because each and every single one of these cycles requires the item hopper to both fill and empty. That means that you're going to get the full value out of the hopper clock. But if you're taking it from the redstone block, it goes back and forth much faster. In fact, literally half the time it takes for the items to transfer between the hoppers. But maybe you might be wondering, how do I take this constant signal that I'm seeing and turn it into a pulse? Because many builds use a single pulse and they do not rely on a solid signal. Well, the answer is quite simple. You use what's known as a monostable circuit. And it is simple as just going and breaking those blocks out there. You get yourself a sticky piston, put it right there, grab yourself a block, throw it on top, and you can see very quickly, just got a really quick pulse. We've now turned that solid signal into a pulse, and that really is all there is to it. Now I do fully explain everything there is to know really about this particular type of a clock in a video on my channel. And if you'd like to watch it, I'll make sure to leave a link to it at the end of the video if you so desire. 
Now, obviously, these are not the only clocks that are out there. There are many different types. Here is just some that I have been working on myself that seem to work pretty well. These are two that I was testing earlier. This is obviously the computer timer. As you can see, it is using that pattern. And in fact, they are very fast. This being the torch burnout clock, relying on those torches burning out and being updated rapidly. And if I throw feathers in both of them, you can see they're extremely fast. You see they ended the exactly the same time. The major difference is here is that this one doesn't actually need anything to activate it to turn it on and off, while this one does. There is some wacky stuff that you can do to go and make it do so, but it becomes a little bit expensive to the point where you're thinking, why not just build this? That'll do perfectly well. So let me show you what I had to do to make that same clock work properly. Here I had to take it off the side. This is the ironic part. This doesn't even work if that isn't doing it. So it goes off there, sends the signal into there so it's turning on and off only when there's items present. But the thing is, is look how slow it is. It's not particularly fast because it is only as fast as the hopper can push items in. The hopper pushes about one item for every 0.4 seconds. And that's not particularly great. But that is also the same thing with this one. I mean, if you have items already preloaded in, that's great, that's fine. But you will still have the same issue if you're loading them in. They're going to be slowed down. In this case, they're only doing it at three pulse because of that repeater right there. So that begs the question, what's the sense in having it automated like that if it's going to be that slow? Well, you can always throw stuff into it, and if you need it to load in quick, well, then you can set it up so that you have it on a lever like this, and then when it fills up, you can use it. So at this point, you know, that thing's filling up right there. The moment that this turns off, it'll start shooting off the items. But that brings back the issues of hoppers and how quickly they can load items into an item sorter, and that really is what ties the knot in these things. Usually when you are dropping out items, you're usually doing it into an item sorter. So in this case, this is a very well-known item sorter dropper. I would uh, that's, that's its general purpose. I've used it for a few other things as well, but it works pretty darn well for what it is. And the really nice thing is it's variable in its speed. So I throw some items in here, and you can see it's already starting to throw them out. But you can also slow it down. You can see it's, it's going even slower and slower and slower. So that variability is extremely useful. But there is a downside to this. It's not usable in Bedrock. To solve this issue, all you need to do is bring this dropper forward one block. I'm going to destroy that block there. Throw in a regular block like this instead. You need to have that redstone dust still up top, but instead you're going to go and put right there a repeater and a block on top of there. And that's really all there is to it. It works the exact same way otherwise. So you just throw some items in and you can see it's working exactly the same. Now, if that's not exactly your cup of tea for dispensing items into your sorting system, this is another one that works very well. And it's been known for quite a while by many of the redstone community. And all it is really is just cycling through this redstone torch and going back in and on itself over and over and over again. It does rely on something providing some sort of signal to turn it on and off. That could be a comparator if you're using the chest itself to turn this on and off just by making a knot gate. You know, you're just taking the signal out of the comparator and then you put a redstone torch inside of the block, etc. And that will work just fine. To demonstrate just how easy that is, I'll just throw down some blocks right here. I'll take that torch, throw it on the side there, and there you go, it is turned off. But the moment you go and throw in some items, you'll see that the clock has turned on. Just keep in mind that if you have this down to this point here, it does burn out on occasion. So I do not recommend having it on just two ticks. It needs to be at least three ticks for it to function. You will probably need to restart that clock. Once the items are out of the chest, you'll see that the clock stops once again. So that's a pretty good circuit too. There's also many areas you can take a signal out of this right here. Uh, easiest one obviously is right here, but you in fact can take signals out of multiple different locations off of here as well. You can take it off of this block. You could be up one block and you could be taking a signal out of that redstone torch. 
can take it off the side right here as well. So many locations that you can go and get a signal out of here if you wanted to use this for other purposes. Once again, if you wanted further explanation about this wonderful ethyl copper clock behind me, I have a video right on my channel and you can find it on the screen right now. So go ahead, click it, and enjoy.